Astra Jorda, welcome to Property Insights. Thank you for having me, Mark. How are you going, all right? Good, I'm going really well, thanks. Are you, yeah, are you feeling any of the pressure uh, that the interest rate cycle's been causing to some homeowners? Yeah, look, definitely. Um, I think the biggest evidence of that is the shortage of stock on at the moment. I think that's one of the biggest things that I'm noticing, you know, buyers just don't have enough property to look through and they don't have enough options. And that's also reflected in the open home numbers we're having as well. Just a huge amount of people coming through open homes. So you're a senior person at Ray White in Erskineville. Yeah. And Erco is uh, not what it used to be. No, um, <laughs> it's it's changed a lot. In Newtown is quite a trendy, high priced, sought after area for all the right reasons because it's close to the city, close to the Sydney University, close yep. to the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. Mm hmm. And me and other things, close to Newtown for that matter too, you know, <laughs> which is now a big food hub and hanging out hub. Absolutely. Um, what's happened to house prices or dwelling prices, I should say, in a place like Erskineville? They've gone up. I mean, the the whole vibe of the inner west, Erskineville, Marrickville, Newtown has changed drastically even since I've been there. I've been working in the area for about seven years and even since I started, the demographic of people that are looking for property there, just the vibe, the energy of the area has changed. I mean, I think recently Enmore Road was voted one of the most trendiest or popular streets in, in Sydney. There's new restaurants opening up every other day. It's just changed so much. I saw something in the papers. I'm not sure if it was a weekend, but it was, <laughs> it was online. But it said something like um, the local government and the local councils in Marrickville, Erskineville and I think it said Newtown, but anyway, certainly those areas might have been mm -hmm. Pusham or something. Was talking, are uh, talking about um, trying to revitalise the areas with mm. allowing bars, restaurants, etc., to open later or something along those lines. I yeah. would imagine there'd be a lot of pushback on it, but why do they feel like they need to do that when it already, as you just said, it already feels like it's got a big vibe going on anyway. I think it's just the momentum in the area. Um, it's what the locals want. I mean, there are certain areas like King Street, Emerald Road. There's, you know, live gigs, events. It's just, I think, especially since COVID's you'll say, ended, there's been an injection of life and resources and, you know, people opening up these venues back in the area. And it's just become this this hub of, of energy and excitement. I've noticed that even, you know, I live in the east and I grew up in the eastern suburbs and I've noticed that even people that I went to school with, I've seen them coming through open homes and they're now actually actively choosing to live in the inner west in the, the areas that I look after. And that I never used to notice that as much. So it's just it's people choosing to come across. It's it's just a, such a fun area to be in. So where do you cover? You cover Erskineville? Yep. T take me, take okay, me through the so journey. So we've got two offices. So we've got the Erskineville office, which is what I work out of, and we've also got the Surrey Hills office. Um, the areas that I look after, um, Erskineville, Newtown, like you said, um, Enmore, Marrickville, Stanmore, Petersham, Darlington, Chippendale. I work in a team and and, and myself and Erkin, who's one of our directors, we don't focus on one area specifically. We look after multiple different areas and, you know, sometimes there are people that specifically want to live in one of those areas, but usually there's cross-pollination amongst the areas and each area has got its own certain vibe, but they're, they're, they're all, they've all grown in popularity recently. So is it, is it, are these areas, any one of those areas or all yeah. of them are, that you guys are covering, are, are the people who live there owner-occupiers or is it a big rental market? Both. Both. I, there's definitely, I've, I've certainly noticed that in recent years, again, since COVID, if you look at that as kind of like a, a line in the sand, there's been a huge surge of investors coming back into the market. As you would know, like rent, rents have been going crazy recently. Definitely been some investors coming back into the market. I've noticed that. But a majority of the people I look after are first home buyers. Whether or not they're living in it or they're rent vesting, so they're renting somewhere and then they're looking to buy, those are the majority of the people that I look after. I'd say like I sold uh, one bedroom recently in Newtown, had a huge amount of people come through and I'd say about 80% of those people were first home buyers looking to move into it, not just rent it out, but looking to move into it. And are you seeing, obviously the supplier's downed. Yeah. Everyone keeps telling me, all the agents. What, what do you put down the reason why owners are not selling property? 
Oh, well, I think we're going to, I was listening to a podcast or an interview that you did with Tom Panos and you were saying how it'll be interesting to see what transpires over the next, I'm even noticing it now, but over the next three, six, nine months, once people start coming off their fixed interest rates. But at the moment, I think there's been a lot of wait and see. We've had, what was it, like 11 interest rate rises in a row and there is that I, I, I want to make sure I'm timing it right. There's always people that need to sell, but for a lot of people it's I want to time it perfectly and uncertainty about how things are going to transpire in the market in general has people hold back and that conservatively. So look, it's I'm sure everyone, you know, there's various reasons as to why people are choosing to hold on to their property, but it takes usually when we see like we've had some really strong results. I think that's just that's not just been in the inner west, but across the board in Sydney, there's been some, you know, pretty powerful results. It takes, I'd say about three to four weeks for the media to start reporting on it. And then there needs to be a few consecutive reports on that for sellers to feel or prospective sellers to feel confident to put their property on the market. So there's a little bit of a lag there. So I'm we're now starting to see a little bit more stock come on, but for the past few months, even though we've had growth, I think it's predominantly been because of a low stock. Just if we just take Tom's thesis, mm. um, Tom, is, I think what Tom is saying is that people, vendors, potential vendors, are not yet feeling at risk because they've all got the job. Yep. It'd be different if people start losing their jobs mm -hmm. and they've got nowhere to go, they have to sell. Yeah. But people still got the job, mm -hmm. but they might be feeling the pressure. Not yet. But but they're not. It's not enough pressure yet. Yeah. To feel as though they need to sell, and they're probably saying to themselves, "Why don't I just hang out a bit and just see if we can get a better price down the track?" Because they keep reading with what you just said is in the media. Yeah. Oh, house prices, dwellings, are prices they're are going, going up. up. So I'll, so I'll wait till they go a little more bit money. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, but is there a danger? I think there's exactly said like people are feeling the effects of inflation. Um, and they're feeling the effects of increasing cost of living. But if that just means that they don't go out as much for a little bit, then that's okay. But again, it's it's those who are on fixed rates. And for, you, know, you think you were saying that for a two-year period, 40% of loans that were taken out were fixed rate. Mm. And it's normally five. So it's going to be really interesting to see. And I don't have a crystal ball. It's really cliche to say I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how things are going to play out over the next couple of years, but it's it might be a trickle, it might be an influx, but I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. It's, I think, yeah, as you said, people don't need, if they don't need to, they don't absolutely, they're going to hold on to it. Because as well, a lot of homeowners in the area that I look after, the areas I look after, it's the only property they own. So it's not necessarily that they have a, a portfolio of investments or they have, you know, one, an investment in somewhere they live. For a lot of people, it's their most important asset that they own and they're going to hold on to it for as long as they yeah, can. Yeah, fight for it. I was speaking to someone the other day. She's considering selling her unit. I was having a chat to her about it and she was getting a bit distressed over the phone and she was saying, look, Astrid, this is the absolute last thing that I planned on doing. This is the nest egg that I have for my kids. Like I've, you know, this is, my plan was to hold on to this for the foreseeable future, but I can't. Is your organisation getting many distress calls yet? I mean, you're getting, Not yet. you're getting hit up by the bank saying, can you sell this property for this particular borrower? We we always get those, but I haven't yet noticed. I've only just, I mean, I can't speak on behalf of, of the whole office and the whole team, but personally, I've just started getting a few of those calls. And it might not be the call of I'm in a position of financial dress and I need to sell. And I don't know how many of those there are going to be. But I certainly think there's going to be quite a few investors who have, you know, maybe bought something 10 years ago, five years ago, have seen a little bit of growth, maybe not as much as they would initially have wanted to. But they're now thinking, well, you know, it actually makes sense to sell now because it's actually putting me in a situation where it's it's not a benefit to hold on to it anymore. Yeah, there's no my, more upside. Exactly. There's no more upside. Exactly right. There's no more upside it makes sense to sell now. And again, there've been enough positive stories of some great sales that we've been having where they're like, okay, now I feel confident. Because it's the one thing for us as agents to be like, now's a good time. Because most agents, <laughs> you know, you all, every, 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 you know every, every time's every time's a good time. <laughs> but right now, I mean, my general advice to people as well is if you're looking to sell in the next three to six months to even a year, I think we've got a, a little bit of a window left and then it's I'm, I'm uncertain what's going to happen, but there are still some really strong results happening at the moment. One of the things I can't get my head around is when I 
go out somewhere mm -hmm. at night and the evenings and in the afternoons, the, all the establishments, which is service-based establishments, in other words, place where you buy food, yeah. restaurants, bars, yeah. are full of people in your cohort of age group. Mm -hmm. What is it going to take to stop them spending? Because they're the spenders. Is it, is it because they don't have debt? What, what is it? What do you think it is? What about your friends? What, I mean, cost of living has gone up 100%. Yeah. Rent's gone up if they don't own a property. Mm. How are they coping? How, or do they just have a different attitude? Look, I'm going to earn it, I'm going to spend it. I mean, what do you think it is? I mean, if I, if I look at the people that are like my, my group of friends and my close friends, they're very responsible with their money. And, you know, I've got a, a girlfriend of mine and she's been saving since she was 18, fresh out of high school. And she still hasn't committed to something just yet, but she's in a position where she can. But does she spend? She does. No, she does. She does. Not, she's conservatively, conservatively. But I mean, look. She's, she's a net saver. She's, yep, she's a net saver. There are, you know, I've got, like, I'm I'm fortunate that I've got friends that are, you know, they're doing, they're very successful, they're doing very well, but they're, they're making good, they've made good financial decisions. Using myself as an example, when I was in my 20s, saving for a property was not a priority. And I was one of those people going out and going to dinner and, you know, traveling and that immediate gratification living the moment i'm not ashamed to say it my mindset has completely changed now so that could be one of the the reasons why people are just going out and spending it's you know we're again we, for quite a long time we weren't able to and we weren't able to travel and you know restaurants were shut down and we were cooking at home and just staying at home and i think people are still enjoying the novelty of being able to do that i mean my mum lives in america and i wasn't able to see her for three years so I think that plays a part in it as well. But, you know, for me personally, like I've, I'm being extremely conservative. I'm lucky I love cooking, so I cook at home a lot. But I've stopped going out and, and spending like that just because my priorities have shifted. So maybe it takes a shift in priorities. Because when I was 20, 20, mm. 22 or something like that, you had, the pressure was on you to buy something. In fact, yeah. the pressure was on you to get married, the whole thing. <laughs> the time that I spent running around been a bit crazy was probably straight after school up until that point up until 22 23 yeah do you think it's a case that because i'm trying to get my head around what's going on in this economy mm. do you think it's maybe a case that the people the age group whereby we do spend and sort of indulge ourselves mm. when it used to be 18 to 23 22 is now more eight into say 30 in other words it's opened up a bit more and yeah, uh, therefore, possibly. and then we don't really sort of settle down, so to so to speak, until we're probably. I don't want to just be too hard line on, just no, say no, thirty, no. but yeah, at a, we're, over, we're we're settling down at a much later age. That could certainly be a part of it. Um, I mean, especially that you know, I've, again, I'm using my friends as an example. Like I've got a group of girlfriends that are you know settled down, they're married, they've got kids, and I think women are doing that later, and maybe that kind of knocks a crossover to the guys as well that feeling of you know that's something i can do later on or i will do later on but again i think that's i wouldn't want to generalize with that the one bedroom unit that i sold a couple of weeks ago sold for eight hundred and forty seven thousand. the the person who bought it um she had been saving she told me she's like she'd been saving since she was 18 i think she was like in her mid-20s i didn't ask her age but you know, she had been, and she even said, and there was a quote in the paper, she's like, I know I'm going to be living off baked beans for the next. So I think it's, owning a property is still the dream for people. I think for a lot of people, that is something they prioritize. I didn't when I was in my 20s, but I still do think that a lot of people are doing that. I mean, I'm seeing, you know, people come into my auctions and they might not be buying the property, but they're registering to bid and they're doing contract changes and they're getting involved. They're in their 20s. They're in their early 20s. They're in their mid 20s. So there are still people doing that. I don't think anyone's ever given, been able to give me, including the Reserve Bank, I don't think they know where they know. No one's really done a study on this. Mm. But I'm just trying to work out maybe anecdotally, anecdotally what people are experiencing. Your areas that you yeah. cover off that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. they're sort of protected in that. A little bit. Re really protected. Because you're not going to get, you can't build new houses in Erskineville or Surrey Hills. I mean, it's, you have to pull something down to build a new house because there's no, new, there's no yeah. spare land. Yeah. Um, people don't like you building next door to a 10-story building. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so you're not going to get council approval for that sort of thing or you're going to, if you do, it's going to take a hell of a long time. Mm. So the new supply of new properties is highly unlikely in your area. 
There, the areas are certain areas where you see it happen. Um, Erskineville is not typically one of them. It's more so in the areas such as Marrickville. Like Marrickville is one of my favorite suburbs to sell in. You've got such an eclectic mix of people there, but that's where you might see some of the newer developments. So, you know, blocks of 12, blocks of six, um, larger apartments, complexes being built. But there's only certain areas where you can do that. I mean, Marrickville is one of the the suburbs, you know, you look at Hurlston Park, Dulwich Hill, that has the land to be able to do that. But the closer you get into the city, the harder that gets. And the tighter the restrictions are with council and noise and 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 privacy. It, yeah, so it gets trickier, I think, the closer you get to the city. Of the areas that you deal in, mm -hmm. where's the most exciting area that you reckon people should be investing in? Or where would you invest in <sighs> out of all those areas? And I'm not talking about fancy stuff i'm just yeah, saying yeah. You know, like if you if you know, where would you get excited about where things are happening and just change and it looks like still good value relatively speaking you know where would you go to i would go so i say like marrickville is one of my favorite places to sell in for that Why? reason Why? because i've just seen it change i mean you could use the word gentrification it's the the area that i've seen grow the like even in my time again like i've only been working in the inner west specifically for seven years and it has been really exciting watching, you know, all the new restaurants pop up, the new bars, watching younger people come into the area. So it's typically, um, you know, a lot of older, more established families, older, more established homes that are there. And just watching new life being injected into the area, younger families, people looking at starting families, the value in that area, the growth has been exponential. Just looking at that as an example, so what I would be doing is I'd be looking at the areas that are performing really well. Like first it was Enmore, Enmore, Marrickville's on the other side of Enmore. So it kind of it always radiates out. So, I mean, look, if you're looking to buy you and you're just looking for your first property, I mean, you buy where you can. But if I was looking to buy somewhere, I would be looking on just the outskirts of those suburbs that are already doing really well. 70s, 80s block apartments are still doing really, really well as well, especially like if you're looking at the resale value. You know, apartments are the stepping stone for getting into the market. So, depending on where they are, they tend to do typically very well. So, so apartment, so so apartment prices are doing quite well in those areas you're talking about. They well, they have been, but a big part of that has been due to low stock. So, houses typically think of like how much they you know value they they accrue over time. Typically, greater as people know, like obviously, land is very valuable. But I've noticed the apartment, especially it's it's not necessarily because the apartments have grown, it's more the areas that have become more popular. So there's more people looking in those areas. I think that's what's caused, you know, growth in prices in areas such as Marrickville, Dulwich Hill, um, Enmore, Stanmore. There's been, especially now that people are going back to work, those suburbs that are around this closer towards the city, close to public transport, you know, close to some nightlife, not right on the main road necessarily, but they're close. They're doing really well. So, and and, and finally, in terms of a buyer, if a buyer's coming along to, you know, bid at one of your auctions yeah. or buy, a, you know, make, put up a price in a private treaty environment, mm -hmm. what would you say in your experience is the one thing that's got to be of a certain quality, et cetera, that's the non-negotiable? To the buyers in, in, in a property, in a, it doesn't matter if it's a house or apartment. What, what's the one thing that they must have? What's the one must have in the, in that joint? It used to be that properties that needed work, so Reno, Reno. I, what, they, what do they used to call them? Um, fixer renovators uppers, delight, renovators delight, fixer uppers, yeah. um, and not complete knockdown, but you know you're renovating the bathroom or you're redoing the kitchen, kitchen bathroom, adding value, the opportunity to add value those used to be really, really popular. Like people would jump on them because obviously, you know, the first thing you, you know, you're told as a first home buyer is you want to buy something that you can add value to. Worst house, best street. It, 100%, exactly right. And there's a few of those that we've had, we've sold recently, right? But because of inflation at the moment, the cost of getting a tradie, the lead time on actually Brain damage you're getting in. <laughs> there's actual brain damage. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the landscape of that has changed. So- one of the reasons why, again, I'll talk about a, a property I sold recently as an example, um, 13 of 39 Laura Street in Newtown, that was a fully renovated one bedroom unit. It was a tasteful renovation. Everything had already been done. First home buyers are new to the game. 
what you see is what you get. That's the safe bet for them. There's nothing here. It was a 70, 70s, 80s block with the notoriously safe buys. Um, and again, I'm generalizing, but that's the perception of them. So the feedback was really positive. It was fully renovated, nothing to do. I had 27 registered bidders at that auction and safe to say the owners got more than they expected, more than they wanted. It was extremely popular because there was nothing to do. The buyer didn't have to come through, the prospective purchaser didn't have to come through and think, okay, well, I love the unit, I love the location, but I need to do a full bathroom reno and I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that and will I be able to live in it as it is and how much do I have to put aside out of my total budget so either they want to get a tenant in straight away and they can, there's nothing for them to do, or they can move in themselves. Yeah, that's very interesting. And, and, and maybe because a lot of people have already been through their renovation cycle and they just say, I don't want to do it again. That too. <laughs> and uh, and, and because it's hard to get tradies, it's hard to get people to turn up on time. You've got to get council approval, get to get body corporate approval if it's yeah. in an apartment building. Yeah. Um, you've got whinges next door. You know, like, I mean, <laughs> that, that, it, everyone gets it. And uh, then you can't control the price. If that changes though, like because if we're starting to get a bit more normalized, things are starting to normalize a little bit more. A little bit, yeah. Um, do you think people will go back for the renovators to light? Because yeah. you know, like I, I, I used to always go for those renovators to light, but I'm I'm one of the converted people. I don't I don't know anything about having to renovate anything <laughs> anymore. I'd rather get something that's because it's just too hard. Yeah, it's just a pain in the neck. Yeah, and uh, and you go over budget always. Yeah. So, but do you think that that renovators to light thing will come back as? Or are people now just off it forever? No, I don't think they're off it forever. And again, like it depends on the type of property you're talking about. If you're talking about, we sold um, Erkin and I sold a home on Juliet Street in Marrickville, which is one of the you know one of the nicest streets in, in the NS. It's very popular, and it was literally the worst house in the best street. And this was only about this would have been like a end of last year. And that's, you know, that's what I love about the area that I work in is there are people like it's still the dream to to buy that that fixer up and turn it into their dream home for their family. Astrid Jorda from Ray White Erskineville. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you.